Okay, so today I want to go through a little bit of information on kind of the importance of a corpus. I know we've, I know we've brushed on it earlier by kind of uh, alluding to it and playing around with our corpus and seeing the impacts of that, but I'd like to be a little bit more quantitative about it. I'd like to be, uh, I'd like to understand it a little bit more thoroughly than just brushing it off as like, oh, it's important. What does that mean? What does it's important mean? Is it important in X, Y, or Z context? Is it universally important? And we're also going to take a look at some of the techniques people use on their corpuses. Um, a common technique that people use, and AFL supports, and I'm pretty sure every fuzzing tool I've ever looked at that has some level of complexity, supports something like... Um, something like corpus minimization. And corpus minimization is typically the process of running all of your inputs through prior to actually mutating them. Run all of your inputs through in one pass and then only keep inputs that generated new coverage. Basically, you're deduping your inputs based on the coverage that they create. So what I'd like to do today is I'd like to go through the process of generating a good corpus. It's very, very, very important to note that generating a good corpus is entirely specific to your target. But I'd like to show some of the processes and some of the thought processes I have when I'm creating a corpus. In this case, we want to fuzz object dump. So we want as many elves, PEs, different architectures, different languages, different linkers, different versions, different levels of debug symbols. And there's a couple of different ways that we can try to tackle that problem. And I think one of the ways that we're going to try to do that is probably by... Um, probably by in some way automating the downloading of some of those files by using certain um, like OS uh, repos. So like the Debian repo, the um, like Arch repos, all these different repos. We'll try to find a way to construct kind of random URLs for random architectures um, and find where they store their symbol packages and where they store their... Uh, uh, normal packages, and we'll try to pull down a good smattering of everything, and then we'll see how much that helps or hurts us. Um, and then we will minimize that set. We'll basically go through and delete any inputs that don't create new coverage, and we'll see how much that helps or hurts us. Um, my bias going into this, my bias is that typically that hurts you because coverage is not the only thing that matters. There are so many other factors other than coverage. If you have duplicate inputs that hit the same coverage, who cares? Because if you select input A that generates the same coverage as input B, then it doesn't dilute your input pool at all because both of them do the same thing according to your definition of what it does. Now, it can become an issue when you do have true dilution where you have uh, something that gets really shallow and you have a thousand copies of that, but only one or two copies of the more complex cases. That can become an issue, but we're going to try to quantify some of those things. We're going to try to graph some of these things in terms of the, the coverage provided per input. We're going to look at the coverage provided per input per byte. So we're going to try to find if inputs have correlation between their size and the um, coverage they hit, uh, look at kind of the density of them, we're going to look at compressing the corpus. Basically, every single thing today is going to be related to the corpus and, and analyzing it and trying to make it better. Okay. By the way, right-click on a channel and then mute uh, until I turn back on. It's pretty solid if you get annoyed. Oh, yeah, for sure. I do that on, like, server. I do that on almost every server. Um... How are external accesses handled in emulated fuzzing? For example, if the target uh, binary is a GUI app and accesses the XOR API constantly, uh, or some network or USB driver that has a lot of access to hardware, everything needs to be hooked and emulated separately. How is, the, uh, how is this stuff handled? So in that situation, you would have to emulate those things. 
Obviously, pass through. You can do pass through. There's nothing stopping me from emulating the way that I do reads and writes to directly going to Linux and making a, a wrapper layer that I maybe hook things on or maybe uh, do copy on write on files, but then rely on Linux to handle the creation of those files. Or maybe I uh, root um, each of the each of the different things into their own path, and then you like fork from an original so like you could you could potentially say i want this program to access the files directly on the file system but i want them to be copy on written into a cheroot so for example if i wanted to read etsy password it would get access to my host etsy password but if it wanted to write to it or change it it would end up writing it to slash temp slash core 47 slash etsy slash password and that's where that would end up and then it would basically work in that context there's nothing stopping you from doing pass through but at that point you're probably going to lose a lot of the performance advantage you get by emulation um it varies truth's not a security boundary i mean it is if you if you make it a security boundary because you implement it yourself i don't i don't literally mean use it to root <laughs> And in this case, you would understand the ramifications of what you're giving it access to because you are still emulate the, emulating the open and the read and write. Sorry for the unrelated uh, comments, but did I miss something? Uh, or is your emulator code on GitHub messing up the module AHT? Is it? Did I never commit AHT? I never, I never push shared. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never pushed the shared folder. Um, inputs, JIT cache, don't need those. Thank you for that. Cheers. Fuzz all the things. Hell yeah, follow the white rabbit. Thank you so much for two months of subscribing. And now that we've got fancy Discord, you can get a, a custom color to your name. Woo! <laughs> But we will have emotes soon. We'll, we'll have sub badges soon. We're going to have some cool stuff going on. Um, and I just made a Firefox window somewhere. There it is. Hell yeah. Hype boo, Pog champs. All right. So let's go look at uh, Debian. Uh, actually, Ubuntu packages. And let's take a look at package search. And then what's a good binary? What's a good binary? Um, ooh, we probably want some kernel modules. Google Chrome. Fuck no. Gross. Um... Uh, bonus if I can get multiple files from it and it's useful. Honestly, Obstump might be good, or Binutils. Might actually be solid. Um. Binutils might be a little bit large. Build essential. It's a meta package. Yeah, the, the question is, is there any way? Eon? What the fuck is Eon? Is that the new name for Demian? Or Ubuntu? <coughs> um... Let's see. Architecture all, list of files. Uh, this looks like a meta package as well. Um, user bin. Hmm. There's a build essential .tar .gz on the right.
Yeah, so that's the source package. Want to use your system's own package manager to download binaries? Well, mainly because I'm going to use a bunch of different uh, operating systems here. libc6 dev. Okay, libc would be fantastic. Libc would be really good because we have dot .as, dot .so's, uh, which is a, a healthy mix. Wait, doesn't ot does a dot .a report um does a dot .a report as an elf? No, so we don't have dot .as in our corpus, but I'm pretty sure. Obj dump can dump dot a files and it can do dash g on them which means we would hit the archiving stuff so we want those as well so let's uh basically we need a list of some of the things that we want um make dir uh see ob uh, fuzzing Make your corpus. Okay. Vim readme.md uh, cor uh, corpus collection notes. Um, obj dump supports uh, dot a dot so elf I think pe files as well, right? Where the fuck would I have a pe file? I think it supports a shit ton of stuff. Anyways, we'll just start with those. Maybe more. Um, A files. Um, file. And then we'll just do... Basically, I'm trying to make a description of what these things look like. .so files. Because we're going to use file to kind of prune some of these things out. Okay, that's a symbolic link. Um, 2.28.so. Okay. Dot so files uh, and elf files, right? SOs and elves show up as the same. What do you use a tuple struct for vert adder rather than a type alias? Uh, yeah, just for strong typing. Otherwise, you can add them together. Otherwise, you can like add a uh, vert adder to a uh, U8. And like, well, you couldn't do that, but U64 or U size, whatever our internal type is. Is that adder.0 worth it? Oh yeah, hundred percent. It means that it's like very obvious what your what your goals are, and it makes things a little bit more strict. And I I I I've been doing that in pretty much all my projects recently, and I don't regret it at all. So we're gonna talk about um uh good program candidates and we'll say libc dev right libc dev is good and then let's see so what are these zenial is 1604 Bionic is 18, Focal is 20, and Groovy is the, like, bleeding edge thing. Okay. So, I think we want to start making some, uh, some Python here. Uh, gather.py, and we're gonna have, um...
Okay. We'll do... Uh, Ubuntu, um, def, download Ubuntu, um, downloads packages for all architectures for, for all versions of, uh, Ubuntu, right? And what we're going to have is versions is equal to... Xenial Xenial updates Bionic Eon Eon updates Focal and Groovy And then we'll have I think this is going to be a dictionary Miss Bionic updates? No problem. Okay, and then how do I make this a dictionary like this? A little, put some little curly boys on here. Um, now, we're gonna blast through all these and we could parse these or we could write these out manually and we're gonna write them out manually because it's less work. AMD 64, ARM 64, ARM HF, i3d6, PowerPC, PPC64EL, S390X. Okay. Xenial updates will have the same ones, of course. Okay, and then Bionic. Looks like Bionic, we lost a couple. We lost PPC and I, uh, we lost PPC. Is that it? AMD 64, ARM 64, ARM HF, i386, okay. So this is on Bionic. Bionic updates will definitely be the same thing. I mean, it's, it's possible it's not, but we'll see. Bionic updates, yep. Eon. Um, that's the same. Okay. Focal. Okay, focal's the same. And groovy. Groovy as well. Okay, so that basically we lost support for uh, PPC, PowerPC, base PowerPC, and Xenial. And that's why we're doing different versions. We want, we want that sort of thing here. Um, and let's see what happens here. Is this what we want? No. Download. Um, I want the, nice, that is like checksums and stuff, that is a full name, missing commas after dictionary values, yeah I am, thank you. Um, so how would I get this name? Do I download this page? Because I need to get the full name, which ain't easy. I think we'll, I think we'll download the page. So what's, what's the best way to download a page in Python now? I know there are like a million ways. Request is like a little bit more work than I need. URL lib. Request.get. Is that really the best? Request.get, okay. 
And it just takes the URL. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this page. Um, and we'll have the for uh, version arc in versions dot iter. The it's 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 not iter anymore, isn't it? Well, it used to be um. It used to be something else, wasn't it? It's just iter now. Uh, for arc in arcs. It's items. Yeah, okay, thanks. That's exactly what I want to call that. Items. Ha! Um... Bin utils fuzz in corpus. That's not grizzly. Python three gather dot pi. Okay, download Ubuntu. Okay, nice. So then we can do version and arc. And then packages libc6 dev for package in packages, All right? Okay. And then slash download, and that's the URL. And then we'll just do a quit afterwards. Yeah, you need to do like dot text. Yeah. Um. R is this. Can I do this? Yes. Yes, I can. Wait. I can't do that. How do how do I do multi line here? Or do I just do it? Nope. All right, I guess we'll just whack that in one line. Okay, so then... And string and concatenate on new line. There we go. Okay, so we download the version arc and package, and then that gives us all this shit. And... I'm just gonna use mirrors.tds.net because that's what I used to use as a kid, so... It's just fun. Um, import re. Then we'll do re dot match li a ref quote http colon slash slash Ubuntu.mirrors.tds.net dot star end quote Oops. 
Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. You have a fair point. Um... Okay. I think that's valid, right? None. L I A ref equals quote HP Ubuntu dot mirrors dot TDS dot net dot find. I normally use find all. Oh, match tries to match from the start. Okay. Um, then I just have to do a little bit of this. I just forget in Python if I'm escaping those or not. And it looks like I am. What? Use an R string. Doesn't matter too much. But yeah, then I can get rid of these, right? No, I can't. Um. And am I supposed to be escaping the parens? I don't know if I'm supposed to or not. Why the fuck is this not finding anything? Liahref equals quote end quote close. What am I what am I doing wrong here? Escape the dot? Oh, these? I mean, that shouldn't matter. Yeah, start by matching li. I agree. Okay, it does... Wait, what? It only finds one? Oh, because it's doing an update thing first. I see. Okay, that makes sense. We just have to be less strict here. Um... Now, luckily, I think that'll just do the trick. It's a very weak regex, but I think this will actually work in this case. A ref HTTP colon slash slash dot star. Yep. There we go. Okay. So... That looks solid. And all we care about is one of them. Uh, to download is equal to set. And then we can do to download um, URLs is this. If when URLs is greater than zero to download dot add update add add url url zero print to download and quit okay nice so now we should have a to download I should, in theory, be caching these things, but I don't think it's too strong of a hit. It 
if URLs. Does if URLs work if it's if you're interesting. So I'll tell you if it's an empty set or not. Hey, the the prodigy. Thank you so much for your Twitch Prime. Hell yeah. Hope you're having fun here. Um, it works, but it's sometimes broken. Really? Okay. So does that look good? I think that's pretty solid. And then we'll do, um... How do I do JSON in Rust? Or Python? I think, like, JSON dot, dot something. JSON dot... Uh, dumps. Loads and dumps. Okay. So here we'll do... Um, make their cache. And then here we'll do a... We'll do a... If OS path exists... Uh, ca um, listing cache is equal to um os.path.join os cache and then we'll have uh, ubuntu listing and then if os path exists listing cache fn then return um JSON dot loads open. I think there's a loads. Does it take a file object? Load. Oh, load s is load string. Is it? From a read supporting. Okay, so we'll do JSON dot load. Open listing cache fn read. Okay, and then here we'll do um, check if we have the listing cache. And this will be like list Ubuntu. Oh my god. List. Uh, gets a file listing of packages of URLs to fetch from Ubuntu repos. And then um, get the URLs for every single package. And this is, uh, we only need one URL. We don't care about mirrors. And then we can do save the listing. We'll do json.dump open listing cache fn and then we'll write to that okay list ubuntu listing is equal to this print listing so now this will hopefully if i had typed everything right there will prevent us from doing these accesses again Here's a caching routine I have. Ooh, that's nice. Um, so that just get that just caches all URLs. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. That's pretty good. Okay. Good. Our cache is broken anyways. Arm RF cache. Okay. And then here we just do a get. Ooh, and what will it cache it by? The URL. 
the MD5 of the URL. Okay. Nice. So that'll work in this situation. It'll work in all situations. And then here we just return the to download. Uh, return out the URL list. Headers. Um, it returns the text. Yes. Okay. Nice. Uh, this is going to be uh, download a URL and cache it based on the URL into the cache directory. If it's none, if not drop cache, open that shit. Okay, so now I should have a cache and have a bunch of shit, and now this should be instant. Nice. Thank you, Desu. Probably would have ended up doing something like that, but that is really nice to have, not have to implement. Okay, now that's just instant, and... Now that's just based on the text, which is fantastic. Okay, dot text, get that, find all. Now we have all these URLs. So now, um, def download URLs, uh, downloads a list of URLs to the cache. And then here we can just say, we'll just do get uh, for URL in URLs, um, get URL for now. Download URLs list Ubuntu. We'll just start with this. Um, print downloading uh, URL. And then we can do uh, ii5 of ii of len urls, ii enumerate. Okay. Oh, it doesn't work with binaries, though. Let's just let's just change it up then. It works with uh, that's fine. And then here we can do open R B write binary. Change this to bytes. Right. I'll just do that. Text text is none. Now it should work for binary, and then we just have to change this to a B. Ooh. Uh, bytes request get. My internet dead? You guys still here? Yikes. You guys still with me? Cause like, wow still works. Okay. Yeah, I like weirdly didn't have internet kind of. Luckily it was just a blip. Thank fuck. Okay, um 
You might want to refresh your streams because otherwise you might be like 45 seconds behind now. Uh, you want dot content? Okay. And I'm going to remove the cache just in case. Yeah, WoW still works. Yeah, I was able to, like, heal my character and interact with the auction house. It was kind of weird. My, I obviously dropped frames. I dropped 2.6 thousand frames. Okay. And then we want to save these in another directory, but that's fine. We're just caching them for now. Uh, encode. The URL uh, is bytes. Um, decode UTF-8. Um, is there like a start as one for enumerate? Some, something like that? Yes, there is. Okay. So everything's downloaded, and then I should have some large things in here. Some things that are much larger than others, and those are the actual downloaded files, which is great. Stream didn't even pause. Weird. I dropped a bunch of frames, according to my end. Okay, so now we have this. You see where this is going, right? Now we can add more packages. We can add more things here. Um, and then we'll make a um, downloaded. Um, payload or contents. Is equal to this and then URL lib get file name, something like that. That's not what I want. URL split dot path. Is that what I want? r.info.getFileName. I can just do os.path on it. On a URL. It's probably pretty close, isn't it? Yeah, that works. Um, okay, and then we'll do a uh, copy file. Python, I think it's shootil. Sh is the best one. Oh, we're we're writing it anyways. We have the contents. Um, I don't really care. With open uh, os dot path dot join URL uh, downloaded. File name, write binary, as fd, fd dot write, contents. Okay, so now I have the deb packages here, which is great. Um, wow. Now we need to figure out why it's not working for any other architecture other than those two. Oh, okay. Because uh, there literally aren't any other. Well, that's bullshit. Um, there's probably another thing then. It's probably under, um, I 
I, Ubuntu has a different repo for some of the other architecture packages. But yeah, there are no listings here. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, it's like it, it basically none of them are showing up. So I need to find where those would be then. Let's look for AMD 64. Let's go to this location and we'll whack this in. Yeah, they they store this they store the non X86 thing somewhere else and I forget where it is. Um Ubuntu PPC repo. Ooh, there's also oldreleases.ubuntu.com, which sounds really fun. I forget the fucking path. They put they put it in a in a different repo, and it makes it a pain in the ass to deal with uh, cross architecture. But what was it? Old packages or something? Was something? Old releases. I had R sync the entire pool. Last time I did it, it's twenty gigs. It says. It's not 20 gigs. <laughs> I can tell you that much. It's like uh, it's like two tera. Um. Oh yeah, this is where I want to be. This is the sort of shit that I want. Yeah. Uh huh. These are just the ISOs? I mean... Honestly, ISOs would get me everything I need, right? Like, I could get some old shit in here. Like... I could get some good stuff in here. Let's see if I can find other architectures. AMD, AMD. Netbook remix. I remember netbooks. I don't know. Let's look at uh, Debian old releases. Debian puts all their shit in one repo, which is nice. And it goes back longer. Yeah, what was Debian 3.0? 2002. See, this is the sort of shit that I want in a corpus, right? Yeah, and look at all the architectures. I even got some fucking alpha in here, right? List CD, Jigdo CD. I actually have no idea how to download those. Live CDs, alpha, ISO CD. Oh, yeah. That's what I want. 
I want the Debian. I want the Debian uh, like net install ISOs, and then we extract the ISO, and then that we build our corpus from there. This is really good. There's gonna be some juicy stuff in here. Um. This is probably our syncable. I didn't realize this had archive on here. I actually have CD image mirrored. Oh, you know what? CD image, um, Uh, rsync l I think that's rsync list Nensal has very few binaries yeah that's exactly what I want I just want something that's pretty stripped down The fuck do I list files? I think this might not be an rsync server. Yeah, here we go. So I should be able to do... Okay, so here's all the things that are served here, right? Um, and Debian CD image is the CD images. And then I can do whack. Um, oh, they might not all have the archive. This CD image release. Okay. I don't think CD image dot debian dot org host it I could be wrong oh it does host it okay yeah so the isos yep debian is like 1.5 tera that's how I run offline and then I also have these offline too all areas all mirrors oh yeah why do I want old stuff for the corpus it's just got it, it's just got more diverse um, usages like basically almost every single file almost every single elf in modern Debian is going to be the same they're all going to have the same linker the same compiler they're gonna use the same sections they're gonna use the same linker script in the same orders with the same flags and the same configuration right and so how do I generate different configurations of linked files such that I have a diverse set of things with debug info, without debug info, and all these different things? And it turns out that's a really, really hard problem. So one way that we can kind of approximate it is by using older versions. I can guarantee you the linker script and the linker and compiler that they used in 2003 probably emits different shaped elves with different metadata, different types of symbol formats, different things emitted and stripped and added in sections and ordering and all those things. And that's exactly why I want to, uh, I want to do this. So we'll do rsync L and Debian CD. And then I want to look at uh, 
Oh, that's on mirror. Okay. Wait, is this mirror CD image? Um, archive, please. Okay. Maybe it's just here. CD image. Yeah, there we go. Archive. This is what I wanted. Huh. Three point oh R zero. Like these things exist, but I don't understand why they don't all show up here. How much shit is in here? A decent amount. Can I do recursive list? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. And I'm pretty sure. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll say this is, um, we'll just do CD image uh, and we'll go directly to a uh, CD image list dot text. We'll just get it out of the way. Fuck it. We'll T it. How do you think it would handle something like a PlayStation Elf? You could use some homebrew software. That sounds fantastic. Um, the thing is, I don't know. I don't know where to get a good corpus of that. I want them to be relatively small, right? I don't want massive files. And then while that's running, let's just browse a little bit. And let's find roughly what we want. So, 130, MIPS. I think we want probably the ISO CD and then the NetInst. You can also list the archive and pool using rsync. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the... I don't know if the pool, I don't know if the pools have archives. Um, oh, this is nice. It says the sizes of all these things. Debian, pool, Yeah, this will only have like the active packages, right? The, it's not going to get me stuff from 2003. And that that's kind of why I want to go back to there. Unless there is like a archive or something like that. But I don't see anything in here. Oh, there is an archive. And this will have all the packages, which is really nice. Thank you for that. Yeah, 2002, 2003. Although this, this doesn't have a lot here. What's nice is it does have the debug packages. Oh, fuck. There's a... That was listing a lot more. Yeah, 
Here we go. This is better. It there was a there was a symbolic link to something up a directory, so I was basically listing the whole the whole server. This should be a little bit smaller. This will be nice because it's a little bit more diverse than libc. I don't know if there will be any debug binaries or any non-strip things. There might be like a couple things that aren't stripped. I'm not quite sure. But this, this will have some nice old stuff and a bunch of different architectures. And I feel better using rsync because it's not as hostile to the server than doing crawling. Question is, I guess we can extract the ISO. I think 7-zip can extract ISOs. Um, CD image archive, and then let's just go to like a recent one, ARM64. We probably want the ISO CD, and we probably just want the net install. Okay. List CD, that's literally just the list. This is a torrent, BitTorrent, yeah. To be honest, I guess the DVDs will have a lot of shit in them. Yeah, the DVDs will have a bunch of stuff. And we don't want that. We don't want the net ins. We just want to keep this pretty small. I don't expect that there will be that much variety in having a a 50 gig corpus here. Um, we just want a good sampling of kind of a bunch of different versions of binaries. So now what we can do is cat CD image list, grep, um, I think this is what we want, ISO CD, grep, net, ins.iso that's a pretty small amount of downloads and we should have some good variety in here hopefully yeah we have some 3.1 stuff 2006 2005 Nothing 2004, but we have 2005. Net instant ISO. And these are all ISOs. It looks like these are all actually ISOs. That grep might be good enough. So... Can I rsync with wild cards? Can I do this? rsync archive verbose archive slash star slash star slash iso cd slash star net inst dot iso. I hope this works. It looks like it's gonna work. It looks like it's gonna work. Oh, that's fucking sweet. And where is this, what's this? Who's running this mirror? I think this mirror sucks. Um, uh, 
Oh, yeah, and we can do rsync av progress. Honestly, that's not terrible. It's not great. Um, I don't know who else would host this. Do I have space? Got 72 gigs. How much is it going to pull down? It was like 900 files, probably 200 megs on average. 180 gigs. Yeah, I'm not going to have space here, unfortunately. Yeah, we can try and find a faster mirror. Um, I think this is going to Sweden right now. So we're going to have some serious Synac latency. Um, yeah, I just don't think these, I don't think Debian dash CD has it. Yeah, they don't. How big was this download? What? Oh, yeah, um, crap. Uh, ISO CD, crap, net inst iso. 933, and they're probably averaging. If it doesn't contain ISO CD, delete it. Go to lines not containing that and delete them. Let me see if I can find some disk space. Colon V slash RE slash D. Is that is that a better way of doing this? This is how I've always done it. Making some disk space. Okay, I've got 506 gigs. Because it looks like these are averaging probably 200, maybe even 300 megs. Actually, probably about 200 megs. These net install things are getting fucking huge. Ooh, do you think DI means debug info? Mm, maybe? Because that's a fucking massive net install ISO. God, if that is debug info, that is sweet. Okay. AMD arm arm hiff. Okay, we're gonna cancel this. Um, make dirt mount storage corpus. CD mount storage corpus. Move. Uh, bin utils. Fuzzing corpus star dot iso dot. Okay.
Yeah, and I don't know who else has CD image. I, like, don't know how I'd actually find that out. Um... CD image, weekly images, daily images. Is this this one or this one? Hmm. I'm not seeing anything here. Okay, so let's start working on... Uh, let's see how we want to kind of automate this. Found some homebrew PS2 elves. PS2 homebrew. And the meta value payloads. Oh, those are fantastic. I love that. That's great. Shit. Nice, not strip mips. I like that. Ooh, some syscalls. Yeah, and they'll have slightly different headers and stuff. Yep, some other flags. Uh, let's take a look at download, um, obj dump, bin utils, fuzzing, bin utils, two, three, four, bin utils, I guess I don't have that built, 2.14, bin utils, do I not have any of these things built? Oh, I do have them built. 2.34, average dump. Okay. X, CRT0. Nice. But I don't think this will handle disassembly. Correct. Unknown architecture. But it should handle uh, X and also G. Uh, and we use both X and G. Yeah, that's grabbing debug info, which is pretty neat. Okay, so that's CRT0. Payload.elf. These are all tiny, unfortunately. They're still good. Um, okay, so we need to figure out how I want to do this mounting. Pseudo mount o loop Debian 10 00 MIPS 64 EL mount ISO. Mount ISO, God, I'm um, okay, nice. K 
Okay. Okay, so we have pool in here. Um, okay. We have pool, so we can kind of go through and we can try and get some stuff out of there. Right? Lib cap to... And what's a deb? Nice. There it is. Okay. Um... So we should be able to do something like that. Is TKO fuzz much different to this bin utils fuzzer? Like my assumption is that TKO fuzz also runs in the emulator, does snapshot fuzzing? Yeah, it does. But it's much different because it runs whole systems. It's used to fuzz hypervisors and operating systems. Whereas this is only for user land applications you can build yourself. TKO fuzz is designed to fuzz uh, Windows kernel and Hyper-V. Um, can't parallelize the download. Looks like it'll take forever. Yeah, it's going to take a, it's going to take a while. Not much I can do. There's not a better mirror, it seems. There probably is a better mirror, but there's no listing of, of the mirrors that I can use to find it. So, I could write a script to try and find a better mirror, but by the time that's done, the download would be pretty fucking close. I mean, I guess this is going to take a, a pretty decent, decent while. This will take, like, three hours, looks like. Um, extract up pie, and this is going to sudo u mount mount storage uh mount iso, import os os dot system mount a loop. ISO for file name in glob dot glob dot star dot ISO. I like having the explicit path like that here. Uh, format string FN mount ISO and then this should fail, right? Because we don't U mount. Oh, that mounts over it. Come on. Eventually, it'll make it. There we go. OS.system. You mount mount ISO. Python 3 extract. Pseudo. Target is busy.
Well, that's kind of annoying. Does this print the status code? If it's busy, I'd get a non-zero, I think. Assert this is zero. Assert this is zero. We don't really handle cleanups well, but we'll handle, we'll yell at you if it fails. Okay. So then, we wanna mount an ISO. Mount ISO, pool, main, libc, hmm, what do I want to extract out of these? Install. This package is just a listing, I think. Yeah. Contrib. Nope. ISO. Symbolic link to itself. Pictures, literally pictures. Disk. Okay, so we can probably just grab a couple things out of pool. I'm guessing we can do a listing pretty fast. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna YOLO a little a little bit. Um, okay, pool, main, letter, package, package deb. Okay, so here's an example. Go to here, and then we can go to um, print, yeah, files, debs is equal to glob dot glob of this, and we just replace these. Something like this. And then we'll have this exit after one iteration, sudo umount mount iso, sudo python3 extract.py. Fantastic. Okay. Um, to extract is equal to, we'll just do this. Set for blank in zero uh, range eight to extract dot. We'll do ten to extract add random dot random uh, random dot choice debs. Yeah. Just pick fucking 10 different debs. It could be less because collisions are possible, but it's likely going to pick 10 different debs from that. And then we can tune that number. Um, but this is mainly for testing, so it's not super slow. And then I think... Um, here, we'll just do extract deb. Ok, 
Okay, blah. Extract with AR. So it's an archive. AR VX. And then you get control and data. Okay. For file name and to extract OS dot system assert OS dot system RX file name assert that is zero and we'll hold two one right now. Okay, so we have Debian binary control and data. So, I'm guessing we can make a temporary directory for that. Oh, yeah, and we can do this. We can do, um, I'm pretty sure we can give it a file name where we can say uh, data.tar.xz. And that should have just extracted that. Nice. Okay, and now what I can do is I can extract the data. And how do I tar to another directory? Ram.sample. Oh, nice. Never seen that before. Are you fussing all at Debian? No, we're just getting a, a corpus right now. Getting getting as many elves as we can get. Um. Where the fuck... Okay, uh, tar extract to folder. Yeah, there we go. We're learning the basics. Dash, dash C. Dash cap C, okay. Um, OS.system tar XF data.tar.xz to um extracted and then data.tar.xz Do I need the dash? I don't think you need the dash. Yeah, the dash means nothing. Um. Oh, I have to make that directory. How the fuck do I make dirs? I think I can do make dirs and then ignore or whatever. Uh, 
Garbage dump. Corpus. Gather. OS.makers. Exist okay is true. They must have added that in Python 3. Okay, so now I should have extracted. And then I just have a bunch of shit in here. Yeah, like there's an SO right there. Uh, it's a symbolic link, but that's fine. Okay. So, um, os.system arm rf data dot tar dot xz extracted. I mean, I could have just done a shell script at this point because that's literally what I'm doing, uh, but whatever. So now I don't have to worry about things being there. And then I can glob here um, for extracted in glob.glob. And can I just do extracted slash star? Will that recurse? No. Um... I know there's like a way to indicate it, uh, st slash star star. Slash star? Fuck. Holy shit, is this a hard problem? Lumi, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Fuck yeah. Yeah, how do... Is there actually not a way to do this? I mean, I can just do uh, star.so. I can arglob. Oh, this is path? Okay. From pathlib import path. Path extracted dot arglob start at SL. Well, that's kind of cool. And then we'll just do a couple more. We'll do 32. Spice it up a bit. Okay. Sometimes we're going to get SO, sometimes we're not. That's fine. Um. And I should have .a files in here as well. Or can I just do arglob star? Let's try this. Let's go to four. Just, just give me everything. Nice. Okay, so that, that's actually kind of neat. So now, um. Python lib file. Hmm. I forget what the file command invokes, the name of that that thing. Well, whatever. File file Python file command isn't gonna give a shit. Lib magic. Thank you. Uh, Python 3 mpip install lib magic. Nice. I don't know which one is the good one. It looks like I might want Python dash magic. Um... Okay, and then we'll print magic from file. Oops. This is going to be dank if it works. Ah, you son of a bitch. Um, 
I mean, you could just say if os.path uh, is file. I, I would assume there's a way to get glob to only care about files, but whatever. Uh, Python 3 is file. Oh, of course, it's one word. Yeah, because that's, that's what I want. From file. Because that's a path. Um, yeah, I think that's because it's a path type. Oh, that is fucking cool. Nice. Nice. Actually, what is the what is the thing that internally is used by um, uh, binutils? BFD. Where's my pit package? Oh, as Discord. Pi BFD. Complete or tries to be wrapper around the low level functionality provided by this. Um you can manipulate all this shit. So I think that's what we want. And how would I get any documentation on how the fuck to use this? Create a BFD instance on a file. Okay, okay. Um, from pi bfd .bfd import bfd. Uh, Python three m pip install pi bfd. God damn it. Are you serious right now? Because uh, that would be a great way to see what's supported. All right, well, fuck it. Uh, back to plan, back to plan A. Um, is equal to this, if, how can I do contains on an array? I wanna say if it contains any of the following strings. I wanna say like if, if elf or AR, I think it's AR, uh, AR archive. 
if any i um x in file inf for x in this whoa okay so we can say ar archive or an elf that looks good we got elves I don't know if we'll have any archive files in here in any of these things. Ooh, LDSO. Nice. Okay. So some things just take forever to process. Okay. Uh, if that file inf matches, um, make there's corpus. Um, contents is equal to open. Open the extracted as binary. Read that shit. We should do this. I know. With open this as fd. Contents is fd.read. Um, hashlib. Digest is equal to hashlib dot uh, SHA 256 contents hex digest. Um, OS dot uh, shootil dot copy copy under file, I think. Oh, it's just copy. And then copy source and dest. So the source is extracted and the dest is os.path.join corpus and digest. Okay, uh, put some quotes here, and I think we're good. Hex hide digest is a function. I swore it wasn't, but yeah, it is. I believe it should be a function, but I feel like there's something yesterday that didn't make sense. Corpus. Okay, file. Everything in corpus should be an elf. And things will get deduped and shit. Okay. Okay, I think that's fair. Thoughts? Okay, and now we are quitting after the first one, so we'll grab 16 files from each, so we'll, we'll mount an ISO, we'll grab 16 files, and this might have a problem on the last ISO, which is incomplete, 
I'm not sure how our sync does that, but whatever. Sometimes files just gonna choke. No such file or directory, okay. Um, um la da 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 la da 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 la da 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 ha la da 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 la da 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 oh yeah the sample thing i should do that random dot sample deb 16 La -da -da -da. Now it's clean. Fuck. How do I do that? How do I do an accept and get the thing? Accept. Ah, exception as E. Okay. There we go. Pack bypass for two months. Hell yeah. Oh yeah, and we need to pseudo arm corpus. Okay. Now we shouldn't have that U mount issue because it should basically always end up U mounting at the end. Okay. Mount storage corpus. Nine hundred and six. And this is just like a pretty random diverse set of, of things. What is R in line fifteen to extract the archive? Yeah, this is to extract the archive. Um, technically, that's making me bail. Like, this try accept is making me bail fairly early, which can kind of suck. But it doesn't matter too much. This corpus should be pretty good. I thought there was a... Okay. We're at 6,400. And everything in here should be an elf. Or an archive. Yeah, current AR archive. There aren't many of them. Because .a files typically aren't going to ship. But we have one, which is nice. But yeah, we've got a bunch of elves. Look at this. There's an S390. Grab not strip. Plenty of things that aren't stripped. Do we have not uh, grab MIPS? I MIPS. I guess I can grab V8386. Yeah, we got some power PC, some non-strip power PC things. This is good. I like this. Um Okay, so our current corpus is 6,800 files from uh, all x86-64, maybe some 32-bit things just from the current install. 
and it's only one version. So now we can go into uh, fuzz results, and we'll set this as a baseline. Yeah, let's um, let's get a run going. We're just gonna run it with this corpus, and we'll let this just churn a little bit. And so this blue line, or purple, or whatever fucking color this is, this is the, the current data. So we're going to run this to, like, uh, 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 we can probably go to, like, we can probably go to 10 million fuzz cases here. The bottom right, that's a Nessie. I mean, bottom... Bottom right. No Nessie on the bottom right. Oh, you mean the vertical line. Oh, I can't zoom with this. Is this WXT? Yeah. Like, this is a Nessie right there. That's a Nessie. That's a Nessie. That's a Nessie. Right, those are Nessies, those little bumps. Oh, that that doesn't count as a Nessie. That's that's not Nessie enough. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. Honestly, it's not much different than the, than the other lines, so I don't really care too much. We're just gonna um, we're just gonna kill it and remove all the inputs, and then we'll scoop. Everything here to Grizzly Fuzz with Emu's inputs. We'll just scoop everything over quick. Okay, so now we should have... Oh, that's Fuzz Results. So now we have that corpus. Seventy. How did I lose a file? I, I don't know how I'm losing a file there. Oh, was I doing a... Yeah, I was doing an LSL. Yep. Yeah, I was including the dot dot or dot or something. Is including something. Okay, Cario Run release. And we can see if this new corpus is better. Um, we're hitting new code because we're hitting new shit in the cache, which is great. Um, but it looks like we have less coverage, interestingly. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, hurting coverage. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. See? I'm kind of surprised. I was expecting this to be a lot better. I wonder why that is. What's my timeout at right now? Fifty million. It's plenty large. Um, huh. I think I have a decent corpus in FLAB tests. We'll copy those over too. So now this is kind of a mix of both corpi. 
and we'll see if this gives us any better results. Yeah, there we go. Now we got a little bit more kind of across the board. But it's not that much better. Um, I'm kind of surprised. It was obvious that other corpus was, was kind of hurting it. Now we can see what the growth patterns look like for this. It looks pretty good. It looks like it's uh, about a factor of three better, at least in the uh, coverage per case, which is all I care about right now. I don't know, maybe my timeout's pretty aggressively low. Let's find a place for coding. Uh, let's set a much larger timeout just to see. And then we can also try some different flags. I think right now we're doing dash G. Oh, well now we're getting crashes immediately. Immediately, we had crashes within 6,000 cases. Yeah, look at this. That timeout was huge. Timeout was massive. Now we are, that's an order of magnitude right there, right? The difference between these two is an order of magnitude. So I'm getting the same amount of coverage in order of magnitude faster. Now perf wise, I guess, yeah, this is gonna look better, but uh, against time, it's not as good. Cause that makes sense. Cause these fuzz cases are longer. Uh, but this is getting like, this is like curving upwards, which is gorgeous to see. Uh, performance is actually going to drop as it starts feeding back some of those um, those timeouts. But that's pretty gorgeous. Uh, at least for density, this looks better. But uh, against time, it's not really making up for the lost cases. But we did find two unique bugs within... Uh, three seconds so in about two and a half seconds we got our two unique bugs which i think are the only two bugs that we know of right now so yeah it's looking pretty good i don't know it looks like it's a little bit better huh Okay, um, let's go aggressively low on the timeouts then. This is going to make the upper left graph look really bad, but the upper right graph might look good. But this might hurt our crashes. Yeah, this is going to improve our perf. And this graph won't be as impressive, but this one should be more impressive because we're just doing more cases. We have a crash, but this crash came at... Uh, about 10 and a half seconds and these lines are, are about to intersect so we actually hurt well it's gonna say we hurt it but now it's about to climb again that's just kind of the nature of the beast this is actually some pretty linear growth of code coverage right now that's some new code that we've probably never observed That's pretty crazy. It seems like it's changed slope. Partway through fuzzing, it seems like it, it changed its slope, which is honestly pretty rare. I often don't see that because we, we see like an acceleration uh, of the coverage here. It's pretty gorgeous. Like that's, that's beautiful. And this is still going pretty linear. Which is pretty awesome. Um, I'm going to kill this. We're going to go to... Uh, we're going to try a different argument. Now, these graphs are no longer comparable. So this might look really bad in comparison. But the dash G, I don't know if that works cross architecture. So we're probably not getting too much. Um, and also, if I'm not mistaken, we have no known crashes in dash X. 
So let's let's set this timeout to a bill. A billion instructions is pretty nuts. And we got a crash. Okay, so having that timeout be pretty long is pretty important. Um, I don't know if we know of any X crashes, so I'm going to remove the crashes. And we're going to see if we can get that to repro. So there's that crash again. Um, and we'll go to... Obj dump, and what is this supposed to be? What is the bug that we have here? Uh, obj, obj dump x86.64, and we want to run this against. What are we running this against? Fuzz with emus, crashes. Looks like a null deref. Uh, we want to use dash x mode for this. Uh, it doesn't seem to repro in that case. Let's try the risk v one. And to do this, we need to use our custom QMU that has uh, patches for this version. Risk v QMU risk v. And let's try it in here. No crash. Yeah, this is probably an allocation failure again. And. Oh, I don't know. I think, okay, so I've got an idea here to increase the, the repro ability of some of these bugs is I can go and um, what I could do is I could say when I hook malloc, which I do in main, if I fail to allocate... First of all, let's let's bump up the memory size a bit. Let's give a little bit more space to the emulator. Let's give it 128 megs, which will increase the amount of memory it can use. And then what we're going to do, since basically any bug where we return null from the allocator, we return a failure, there's no way it's going to repro, because for it to repro, the allocator on the real system would also have to go oom um and return failure on the exact same allocation, which is just not going to fucking happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a VM exit uh, for that case, and we're just going to do return VM exit exit, um, and this is cannot satisfy allocation uh, return out. Right, so now we're breaking kind of the semantics, and here we'll say if results dot zero is zero, could not sell, satisfy allocation, and then realloc, uh, same thing here. Right, everything goes through here. This is new elk, and then free. Um, on free, we just, we actually propagate a VM exit for a uh, free failure there. So now, this will likely get rid of that null deref. Um, and these return an option. So we're going to say, and all of these can only go through these paths. So what I could actually do is change this semantic. A little bit better. I like this more. Down here. This one I'll keep. Uh, but if that is zero, return exits. And there are no early returns from any of these functions, which means that this is the only early return, which prevents us from returning null. So now our allocator is no longer capable of returning null, which means those null DRFs will hopefully disappear. We're also potentially going to hit a lot more code because we're going to get deeper because we increased the um, the amount of allocation allowed. We, we basically increased our heap size from like 16 megs to quite a bit more. And we're actually hitting, I don't know if this is all new. 
I don't think there's anything that we produce that would cause us to generate new cash stuff. I think we're literally just fuzzing deeper. Um... Huh. None of this should have affected the caching. Return exit. Return exit. Oh, we changed the we changed the memory size. Yeah. The memory size will cause us to rejit everything. Okay. Whew. About to say, like, there's no reason we'd be hitting this much new stuff. Okay. And now we have no crashes, which is great because those null DRF crashes are, I can guarantee you, they're real bugs. Those are probably unchecked allocation failures, right? Malloc returns null, and the allocation is not checked, and congratulations, you get a crash on a null DRF because you assume an allocation succeeded. So those crashes are real. If I were actually trying to triage and find and report these bugs, I would include those because those are real bugs, in my opinion. Um, but in this case, I don't really care because I want all the bugs we get to repro and it also, it's just going to make our lives a lot better when it comes to reproing these bugs. So I'm just going to restart this because we had a bunch of cache stuff that we missed and this should be a more realistic run. Okay. Everything's looking good there and let's switch back over to uh, fuzzing the dash G flag, which seems to be the most most punishing flag here. And here we go, we'll try this. This is gonna cause us to cache a bunch, bunch of new code. Uh, so we're not gonna get any perf for a while here while we lift some of these things for the first time. But hopefully these aren't too expensive and these will wrap up pretty soon. Okay. All right, that's looking good. One unique crash. So I'm going to remove crashes and we're going to start this over again. Cache should be pretty solid now. So our VM time is going up. Once that's over 90%, we know that we're hitting pretty good runs. Yeah, it's over 90%. So the cost of these uh, compilations is pretty minimal now. So what do we do? We increase the timeout. We increase the amount of RAM allowed for the guest. And we disabled the null. Okay. Oh, now that crash ain't coming back. Wow. Yeah, so our timeout's really long now. We're actually at parity with coverage over time, but you can see our density of cases is much better, which it's 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 really complex, but but a situation like this can often be better, even though it's the same coverage over time, we're doing fewer fuzz cases. And you might be thinking, well, wouldn't you want to do more fuzz cases? Well, the fewer fuzz cases you get, the less input bloat you get, the, the fewer inputs you end up creating. And that means you kind of have a denser corpus in this case. Um, and honestly, it looks like we're gonna cross over. This is looking really good. Um, this is our best run so far on this domain, and we can try and see if we can beat that, right? So what we want to do, and we also haven't seen that crash yet, which kind of sucks. Oh, there's the crash. Um, so that crash should repro. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Found it at about 105 seconds. 
And there should be one crash now, a right normal. Um... Okay, it doesn't repro there. Oh, this is a dash G, isn't it? And a repros. Beautiful. Beautiful! That's the kind of shit I like to see. Okay, um... Ob jump x86 64 dash G fuzz with emus crashes this does it repro here yes it does and does it repro on my native object dump that ships with Debian ooh doesn't look like it's going to must be something new that they added in uh, recent object dump it looks like an infinite loop Kind of. Huh. But yeah, it crashes with that version. And then let's see. Did we build... Binutils, GDB, x86, ASAN? Um, Binutils... We, it looks like we have an obj dump here. Fuzz with emus, crashes, and this. Bink. Oh, it's not X, it's G. Come on. There we go. Uh, six F. PC points to the zero page. Typically not a great sign. But I detect it as an out of bounds uh, write. So this is basically telling me that I'm writing out of bounds in memory. And I'm actually surprised ASAN isn't telling me more than that. It's kind of disappointing, to be honest. Let's take a look at 11814C. Let's see what that code looks like. Um, objdump D. Fuzz with emus. Objdump. Vim dash. I bet we're in a mem copy. S refill. Um, is that a thing? That's not a libc routine. I I don't recognize that. Yeah, that's some libc thing. It looks like that is uh, in the file IO stuff. So I suspect that it's probably an out-of-bounds read into, um, because we see it nearby, like, seeks. I bet it's an out-of-bounds read. It reads, it writes into a buffer out-of-bounds from a read from the file. Okay, let's see how our graph's looking. It's looking really good there, and here it's at parity. And let's see if we can get this better. So I'm going to copy uh, stats.txt to stats large corp and now both these lines overlap basically that's tracking our best line right so i want to use this now we have basically every time we make our fuzzer better i'm going to make a copy of the graph and if we make it worse then i won't make a copy of the graph so we're going to go to the timeout and we're going to set this to 100 mil right this is going to make it run faster but Cases will get terminated earlier in some situations. So that's the only parameter we're going to change in this situation. And we're going to see what happens. Speaking of chocolate milk, is that Sears coming back? Yeah, I think it is. I think that might become my full-time job. I'm trying to look for like a larger project to work on at work right now. Um, and I think getting Windows to boot in chocolate milk... Uh, would be pretty massive, because that would mean we could fuzz literally anything in Windows deterministically with native performance, which would be insane. Um, I'm not aware of anyone in the world with that capability. So I can do that with uh, with Falkovash with snapshot fuzzing, but I can't do devices. Um, this would be This would be probably a world first. So there's a chance that I might just develop that on stream. Depends how much work would care, given that... I'd be doing the work regardless, so it's it's hard to say. 
Okay, so in this situation, we've got... Um, obviously, our density has gone down, which makes sense, right? Um, of course, our density has decreased because we have a more aggressive timeout, so we're terminating cases early. But our coverage over time is actually outperforming. We're getting, uh, we're getting better coverage over time. Okay, that's pretty good. But I bet this is going to stall out harder. Yeah, it looks like we're about to intersect here, and then we're probably going to fall behind. I think we do want that timeout, so we'll let this run just a little bit more here. But yeah, it looks like they're about to be the same. It's been about 100 seconds. We haven't hit that crash yet. Um, I'm not happy with this. I think that crash... Uh, requires us to run for a decent amount of time. So I'm going to put this to a larger number than we've ever used. We're going to use 2 billion. And then I'm also going to, once again, further increase the size of guest memory space. And we're going to up guest memory space now to... F fuck it. Let's give each one a gig. This means they can really churn. Um, pretty happy with that. Okay. So we dramatically increase the timeout to 2 billion, which is almost like a second of execution. Um, oh, we're going to have to rejit because we changed the memory size. Uh, CJIT cache. CJIT test. I can't remember what was in CJIT test, but I, I'm going to imagine it didn't matter. World first on stream? Hell yeah. No, that would be pretty insane. Um, and that, that code base would be a real code base. Like, this is just kind of a demonstration code base. There's a lot of things in here that I would not do in a, in a real fuzzing code base. Um, the chocolate milk is intended to be used for real fuzzing. Like, fuzzing literally anything. Uh, regardless of source, and getting native level performance. Watching the Risk V emulator this weekend, uh, emulator video this weekend. Maybe you found it, but the jailer spec said to get the LSB. Get the LSB out of the computed target. And are set to zero. The least significant bit. Oh, I see. Um, so I would actually fail hard in that situation. Basically, um, basically what you're saying is that you would align the you would align the address so that it's four byte aligned or two byte aligned for the compressed case um in our case we don't do that but that would cause an alignment fault when we go to access the instruction which would then cause us to indicate uh basically a crash um which i like more obviously that is valid it is valid to jump to an address with a a, a least significant bit set but we're not really seeing that in practice. And if we're not seeing it in practice, then I would rather feel closed on it. Because if it were to happen in this case, it's more likely that it's related to arbitrary execution. For example, a jump target gets corrupted and we jump there and it's an arbitrary address which doesn't have the bottom bits zeroed out. So we kind of handle it. I don't think we handle it in the emulator, but in the JIT, I think we do handle that. We get really mad if you try to jit something unaligned. Okay, so we've pretty wildly hurt performance here. I guess we're still we're still compiling a bunch of stuff in this case. But let's see how much we hurt it. Yeah, look at this. So basically we doubled the timeout, but we're not getting any density. And if we're not getting any density improvement, that basically means the 1 billion timeout and the 2 billion timeout are basically identical. Obviously, the 2 billion timeout is really hurting performance, 
but they're the same in terms of their density. And this, this right here is why I always look at the coverage per case and the coverage per time in parallel. That information is so important to me because this basically tells me I hurt the performance over time and I didn't improve the, the coverage per case, which means I just fundamentally made this universally worse. There, there's nothing about this that is better. Now, it's actually... <sighs> right? Now it looks like it's... And uh, now it's on the come up. It's, it's crossed on here, so it's more dense now. And it looks like it might cross here. Because it looks like the slope is steeper, which is pretty, pretty fucking crazy. Um, it found the crashes earlier, but that's... It found it earlier in terms of time, and it probably found it twice as fast in terms of uh, cases. In fact, I'm not really using this fuzz cases per input over time right now. So we're going to just change that. Um, we're going to change this to uh, crashes per case. Case. And I think cases is a two. And we'll just switch this up. And this will kind of allow us to see how we're performing on crashes on both domains. So, yeah, it looks like we got... Uh, we got a decent speed up on both. And, yeah, we're crossing. Holy shit. We, we just... We're sustaining a, a steeper slope, which is honestly really impressive. And coverage over time is getting hit by the JIT cache. Yeah, at, you know what? That's honestly probably why we see that slope change. Because, let's restart this. Um, because it was still doing JIT cache stuff. We want this to be at like 90% right away. Um... Yeah, it's climbing quite a bit. It's also taking longer for the course to spin up because it's uh, we just have more memory to clone when we fork the VMs because we don't differentially fork the VMs. Um, we really should, but we did kind of a lazy implementation. It wouldn't be hard to add. Okay, so now, honestly, it looks pretty similar. Yeah, it looks pretty similar. That's looking good. Yeah, it looks like it's just got a sharper slope, which is crazy. Um, oops. Yeah, that's nuts. Now, we did increase the amount of memory, so that could potentially allow some things to get deeper. But largely, we just changed that timeout. And it looks like it's going to intersect. But I'm not super happy with it yet. So we're going to try to... Um, we're going to change our RAND a bit here. And we're going to... We're going to RAN more aggressively. We, we were at 128. Now we're at 512. Um, and that's the only thing that we're changing. So basically we're doing more corruption. Yeah, I think the cache was mainly warmed up on that run. Like, it wasn't perfect, but it's pretty close, I think. Okay, so got a nice Nessie going there. We are doing better on this axis. And it's just going to be a second before that data starts coming in. Um, we found that crash significantly sooner. We found the crash about 8x faster. That's pretty impressive. And we're... Wow. That's power right there. That's some power. Holy shit. Nice. 
And here, there we cross, and that looks really powerful. And we're hitting code that we may have never hit before, potentially, with those cash lifts. Um, or at least transitions. Okay, um, so I think we're going to find a healthier mix here. And we're going to go to, we're going to set the timeout to 500 mil. We're going to make it 4x faster. So we'll make it 4x faster, but we'll keep everything the same other than that. We're just, we're just stopping a little bit sooner, cutting things off if they're going awry a little bit quicker. Okay. And that's crossing over, it's almost into the 90% territory, which is great. That's what I want to see. Let's see what we got. Yeah, it looks like it's, obviously we're supposed to, we're supposed to lose a lot of density on coverage per case, but we're still outperforming, which is a great sign. Uh, we haven't seen that crash yet, though. Oh, there's the crash. And yeah, we're still finding the crash about 6x faster. That's within the noise floor that I'd say is basically identical. Um, reset times are still really good. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Come on. And we have more... These are some old ones. I think we didn't have any old uh, old files in our corpus. So now we can rerun that, regen our corpus. Grab those as well. One unique crash. Uh, coverage is looking solid. Yeah, look at that. We're powering past. Um, okay, so now what I want to try is I want to try an exponentially harder random. RNG.random mod this plus one. So now we have to basically roll 512 twice to do 512. So we add this exponential curve, which will kind of, instead of having a uniform distribution of number of corrupted bytes, will be a little bit biased towards uh, corrupting less, uh, which means that uh, feedback will have a little bit stronger of an impact. But it's hard to say if this will help us or hurt us, right? We're just trying to see. And it looks like it's maybe, it's definitely hurting us. But I think long term, it'll cause the curve to get uh, steeper. And I think eventually it will start outperforming. Um, basically, it means that at the start, we do less corruption. So we do less uh, breath exploration. But then once we start getting some good uh, deep cases in our corpus, we start exploring them by mutating just a small amount on them and building on top of already good inputs. And yeah, it does look like that's going to intersect. Um, honestly, it doesn't look that much better than than last time. Um... Okay... Yeah, that's crossing now. Isn't it crazy how close these lines are? This, this, I just love it, man. Wow, wow. We're crossing over, and we just found the crash, though, at 100 seconds. So it seems like the uh, aggressive corruption... The, the aggressive corruption seems to help for finding the crash and earlier on. So we're going to do this. This is the this is the glorious part of fuzzing. If rng.rand mod 2 is 0, when you fuzz things, if you don't know which ones work better, keep the old and the new. Never hurts. You can always do both. Now, we have a random chance of doing the exponential and a random chance of doing the uniform. And now, this will hopefully get the best of both worlds. And we'll see.
GNU plot uh, driven development. Oh, hell yeah. Here we go. Uh, it's already outperforming here. It's a little underperforming here. This would actually be kind of expected because given the, um, given that half the time we are doing mild corruption, we'll end up seeing situations where uh, we kind of don't break inputs. So the inputs that are already deep we have a lower chance of destroying them, and thus, that hurts our perf. But it looks like these lines are looking pretty good here, although we haven't found the crash yet. I think that I think that 10x on the crash, that, like, finding it at 30 seconds versus 105, I think that's noise. I don't know how much signal there actually is there. Um, but we crossed over there sooner than I think we ever have in both domains. So now that we've been running for longer, um, this one's probably or this one's gonna start probably doing more work. And I think 512 is probably a bit extreme. So we might want to back off from the 512 that we're doing. But we have that one crash, which is great. When I change the timeout to 1.5, no idea. I I haven't really played with the timeout. I'm trying to only change one variable at a time. Otherwise, it's hard to hard to say what it is. But we can change the timeout. Let's try. Let's try. Uh, fine. We'll try 1.5 because that's what that's what you asked for. I think this is gonna hurt performance, but it's gonna find the crash sooner. Let's see. Yeah, perf is down about a uh, 2x. Uh, density has gone up, which it should. That uh, should be easy for that density to get better. But I think, ooh, that's looking okay. I'm expecting the crash will be found at like 35 seconds or 40 seconds. So it'll probably be found a little bit sooner. Because it seems like having a longer timeout seems to help finding that crash. Although we haven't tried this timeout with the 50% chance of doing the major. Yeah, there it is at 46. Okay, that's actually looking really good uh, on both graphs. Um, the crash was found at a pretty good time. The And the curves are looking really good here too. And that cross is pretty solid and this is ahead as well. Um, let's try dropping these corruption numbers. Let's try this to 64. Let's try both to 64. And I'll see what this does. The reason I'm not making a copy of the best graph is because they're so similar that I just, I, I'm looking for a massive improvement. I'm not looking for a minor improvement. Um... Okay, we have some old ass shit here and some alphas, which is nice. And we'll see how this does. I expect this is gonna suck at the start, but I think it'll ramp. Shit, maybe I need more corruption. Yeah, it's, see, it's, they're both about to cross through. I, I think she wants some major corruption in here. That's what it's telling me. Tells me it wants a shit ton of corruption. We can do that. 4K. Let's do a fuck ton. We're just yoloing. Let's see what we get here. This will like kind of help perf as well because we'll have more early exits. Um. And there's the crash at 15 seconds. Fuck yeah. Yeah, look at that. Gorgeous. So it seems to be finding the crash better, and that, that slope's really aggressive here. Ah, honestly, it's going to intersect at where it normally does. But that crash was found earlier. And I'm trying to weigh all of this information, right? As I pull in all this information, I'm trying to weigh 
Uh, we've seen intersections here before. Like, literally in this exact same spot, we've seen intersections here with different tunings. Um, but we're going to see if this accelerates past. Uh, finding that crash really early is really impressive. It, it was... It was nearly an order of magnitude faster. It's like nine nine point five times faster, which I would say is significant. And I think we just nested really fucking hard. Yeah. Um, that's looking really good there. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. We just jumped. Holy shit! Look at this. This is really nice. And this is now actually new code that we haven't hit. Oh, we're just slaying it. Wow! 7825. This number's just climbing so fast. Come on, let's get a big Nessie. Let's get a Nessie into 8K. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, we're at 79. 8K is basically guaranteed. I think like 8100 is what I saw overnight when I ran a, a, the fuzzer for like all night this is this is fantastic this this is performing really well yeah look at that come on 8k here it is it's like right here come on there it is 8k that's really good this is by far our best run so far honestly I think we just give it more corruption. I don't think it cares. I think it, I think it enjoys it. Look at that Nessie! Look at that shit! We just jumped a hundred! Holy shit! A, what? Are we gonna get another hundred? Wow! Wow! It keeps climbing, I know! This is pretty aggressive growth. Wow. That's wonderful. I love that. That's, that's really nice. Okay, um, we're gonna copy this to... Um, unless we get a massive Nessie. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty big Nessie right there. That. Ed. Yeah, I, I have no reason to really stop it, to be honest. Pwiggle every time boop? Hell yeah! How you doing? Thank you so much for the sub. <laughs> NSFW because the perf gasms. Nessie the Loch Ness Monster. Yup. Because of the shape of the graphs, yeah. You can't... You, the, Nessies, the Nessies aren't as uh, big here. We'll just go to... Uh, coverage over time. So... Nessies are when you get these little uh, little spikes hopping out, hopping out of the graph at yeah, you know, like this is Nessie. Because if I drew some water here, this is like the Loch Ness monster peeking out. <laughs> uh, you see what I see right now? You seeing what I'm seeing? Now that might be that might be a variant. Oh, yeah, I think these are variants now. Yeah, I think it just found arbitrary execution is probably what it did. Um, and we've seen that before. Um, I think it's the same underlying bug. So let's go... Let's make a stream term. SSH Grizzly. Fuzz with emu... Ah, uh, binutils fuzzing... Bin Utils, GDB, X86, ASAN, Bin Utils, Obj Dump, 
X G crashes, and we're probably at like 50 crashes. Now. Yeah, it, we found arbitrary execution. Um, fuzz with crashes. Okay, yeah, these are all executing out of bounds. So if we run this. PC points to a zero page. Yup. Three eight seven five. Ao. Yeah. We've seen these before, right? C seven e. Um. And let's try native object dump. Native object dump doesn't seem to be getting hit by these. Actually, I'm pretty sure we can do start at crash and it will parse them all. Dev null. Yeah, none of them are crashing the native one, which is interesting. But yeah, now we're at 2000. We, yeah, it just. Uh, and and the code numbers are a lie because it's uh, we're just jumping arbitrarily all over the place. Um. This is basically useless information now, unfortunately. Um, okay. Yeah, it's pulling down all these crashes. So it's, it's just kind of fucked. Okay, so that took us a while to find. And let's not pull down crashes anymore. I don't think we need to do that. Yeah. So you can you can see you can see the moment where the arbitrary code execution occurred. Um was the was the failed failed bug? Uh that was a Wi-Fi chipset a, on a phone. Shit. So, it took us a long time to get here. It took us uh, about 400 seconds to get to arbitrary execution. So, I think we should strive to try and get that. We should try and get arbitrary code execution in under a minute. Uh, without cheating. Obviously, we can feed back the crashes. We want to do it without cheating. So, first of all, we have a lot more corpus going on here. So, let's, let's run our corpus stuff here. We'll extract some more corpus files. Yeah, that was, uh, that was unfortunate. Kinda. At least it's a fun graph. Someone made timestamps on the first part of YouTube. If you put them in the description correctly, the player will include them as some sort of chapter, so it should be really useful for these. Thank you, uh, Jan, for that information. And let me let me find that then. Might as well. We're just waiting for that corpus. That's fucking dank. If someone did that. Oh, yeah, I haven't checked my phone. Dude. This dude's a fucking hero. Holy fuck. Like, what? God damn. Holy shit, you're a hero. Um, Jesus, Jimmy, Jimmy Jimbo, okay, so then, 
edit. Thanks, Jimmy Jimbo. I think it was Jimmy Jimbo, was it? Uh, for the timestamps. Fuck. Uh, we're going to have to prune them a bit. Unless there's a different way to do this. Um, YouTube video segments. Whatever they call it. Uh, uh, chapter. Is there another way that I can do it? Okay. I like the chat, that's good. Fuck, all these are really good. Yeah, I was gonna trim a couple, but I like don't know which ones to trim. God damn. Change every question to Q. I don't know how much that's going to buy us. That's not going to get us enough. God damn, these are like all so good. Those are a bit aggro. Um, I'm just kind of deleting random ones ish. Uh, what if I... God damn it. This is so good. We're close. I could also um, maybe get rid of the zero zero. Can I do that? I don't know if this is going to work. We're in bounds now, but I don't know if those timestamps work. Let's see. Okay, so those are in there. 
Oh, maybe I don't need the dash. By adding timestamp starting at zero. Okay. So let's see if I have to do that. Okay. And it might take a second to have an effect. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get those chapters. From their video description now. I got rid of the dashes. I'm assuming that their timestamps in their meme, right, I'm guessing theirs are accurate. Oh, the zero, zero. I can't imagine it's that strict. It starts at zero colon zero, zero, and it has at least three times. Ah, each one has to be 10 seconds or longer. Okay. So we'll do this. We'll delete all leading zeros. Seven. K. Um. I feel like I'm not going to get this first try. It's kind of hard to see the gaps here. 57, 58, 59, 33, uh, 1, okay, 2, this is too close for comfort. Thanks. These chapters just might be too, um, they might be too short. Like, it might be hard to even kind of do anything with them. I, I bet there's no way I got that right first try. Oh, we got it. We got it. Okay. Nice. We did it. Yeah, what's the shortest one? Yeah, some of them look shorter than 10 seconds, but maybe it's not too bad. But yeah, these chapters are dank. Yeah, that's nice. That right there is some fucking quality. See, I should do that myself, or I should actually hire someone to do that. Because that adds some production value. And then this is probably done. Yeah. Now we got some more files in our corpus. We'll copy those over quick. Um, I guess we need to scoop them. Uh, 
Um, R sync. Okay. R sync star to Grizzly. Fuzz with emus. Inputs. A. The 18 hours is going to be horrible. Yeah. Okay, so that should be nearly instant now. Okay. Now we just have a bigger corpus. And we'll see if we hit more with our new big corpus. That's looking good. Okay, climbing. Yeah, it's looking good. Looks like an improvement. I don't think we've ever seen a cross on this graph this early. We've always seen it like here. It's not that significant. It's like a 3x improvement. There's our crash. That's going to be the out of bounds right. But it's probably an out of bounds right that turns into a, um, in our case, it's an out of bounds right that turns into a memory corruption, which then clobbers up an address. Need an emu emoji? Oh, like one of the birds. I see. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Ooh, little Ness. Little Ness. Yeah, YouTube has a 10R limit. Come on. The code execution kind of repros, like not. I mean, it it crashes by jumping to an arbitrary address. In this case, it's zero. Um. We could try the non ASAN. Oops. Yeah, it's, that one's jumping to null. And it's probably just a difference in the heap implementation. We've seen it jump to non-null. Like, we know it's possible. Sake full to this. Oh, that's false with emus. Okay. Um, so now what I can do is I can run this through. Um, for uh, ls fuzz with emus crashes. Xargs i dot slash obj dump g this basically uh two and one dev null how do i have this give me the full path um oh find rather than yeah Is that stopping after the first crash? Because that should work. Um, how do I have it continue? How do I have XRGs continue on a seg fault? Ooh, run up to max procs at the same time. P 
pipe pipe true, like here. I don't know how to do bash. Um, I see. SHC this. Let's see if that works. Segfault. Okay. So we're seeing segfaults. Yeah, I think this is going through all the inputs. Oh, yeah, we found the arb exec. How the f how do I shut that up? Why is that not getting dev nulled? What? There we go. Okay, and then we just do a pseudo D message and we see if there's any juiciness in here. Nope, nothing in here seems too crazy. Okay, let's fuzz a slightly different surface. D message T. Um, I feel like I like this a lot more than than dash T. I feel like I I care about the relative things. Not I'm I'm not looking for log events. I I like this. Okay, so let's try let's try running this with a different arg. We're gonna try dash x. Have we found an x bug? No, we had we thought we had one, but it was a null deref. So now that will no longer show up. We're not aware of any bugs in, in dash X. And I'm pretty sure we can just have all of the flags. Um, I think we can do G and X in the same run. But basically, uh, what we need to do is we need to triage the, um, the code execution bug. And we need to patch it. Because until we patch that bug, we're going to have infinite code coverage. Uh, and it's going to be really hard to actually do anything meaningful with the data that we have. Now, we could potentially block gathering coverage. Um, we could block gathering coverage in situations where it's jumping to a non-executable segment and just not report that as coverage. Uh, but that's a relatively difficult thing to do. Like, making that filtering wouldn't be easy. But... I don't know. Um, what other flags are there? Uh, D to disassemble. Let's see if that gives us anything good. I'll be right back.
Damn, no bugs? Huh. I mean, I'm not really surprised. I'm surprised, but I'm not really surprised. Um, let's see. I'd love to find a bug in this area, but we haven't, we haven't found anything in dash D. Our fuzzer is ass, so I'm not too surprised. Like, there's really no reason this should find bugs. Um, but yeah, coverage looks stalled. It looks completely stalled. There it went up a little bit, but it's, it's pretty stagnant. Which means that our, our fuzzer just sucks. I'm not surprised, but... Because I, I do agree. Um... Let's try and throw in a couple more flags. Headers, headers, headers. Headers, X, all headers. Dash D. Dash E. Stabs info in the file. Symbol table. Yeah, there's some good stuff in here. Let's, um... Let's try, let's try something that we haven't done yet. Let's try dynamic relocations. I'm just gonna flip through all these options. I think I can turn on all of them, but. Yeah, it seems like this one does almost nothing. Almost no code happens here. Not too surprised. I mean, this is where, like, you could find a crash, even though it's not that much code. I would say pretty frequently I can find uh, one crash per every, like, 5,000 blocks. That's a pretty fair number for an easy target like this. It's obvious it's processing something. But, alright, that one kind of sucks. Um, what else we got? Disassemble, we did the full contents of all sections requested. So, cap G might be good. Let me see what happens here. That's going to pull out the stabs info. Ooh, dash dash dwarf is for the dwarf info. Ooh, is that not part of debug info? Huh. Let's try dash dash dwarf. I think there's a chance dash dash dwarf isn't correct. I might have to do equals something. But I'm hoping that by default it's everything. Oh yeah. Yeah, there there be dragons here. There be dragons here. Now I don't know if this is a subset of dash G. I don't know if dash G includes this info. But dwarf is notoriously fucked up. Yeah, there's a crash. Um there's two, there's three, four, um, okay, question is, are these the arbitrary uh, execution bugs? 
For every sub on YouTube, Gamosa runs one fuzz case. Shit. That's a lot of fuzz cases. All right. Thoughts? Do you think this is the ARB exec bug? Or do you think we have some new sauce here? Um, there, there, we got some shit. There's two. Obj dump dwarf. Um, fuzz with this crashes. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's the same bug. What else? Yeah, it's, it's the same bug. We could go try and figure out what that bug is. Link add one symbol. Damn, it's the same bug. I suspect that dash G parses the dwarf info such that this actually isn't really doing anything new. Yeah, the graphs look quite similar, to be honest. I, I think I think we're fuzzing a subset of what we were doing with dash G. So let's um let's see if we can patch this bug. Um because I really don't want to fight into this bug much longer. Uh, so we're going to do a git clone of binutils gdb into binutils gdb x86 no opt. Honestly, um, we'll want to mark this no opt asan. And we'll just go into this. Yoink. And then we'll do a uh, CC is clang 10. C flags is dash dash O2 or dash O0 G F sanitize, sanitize address undefined configure. I think that's all the shit that we need. This will be what we use to kind of repro and, and root cause these bugs. Until we patch this bug, it's basically unusable. Like, we just can't really fuzz into this. It's pretty common. Uh, often when I fuzz things, I patch all the bugs when I find them. Um... Unless they're really harmless bugs, but typically bugs live behind bugs. So, first of all, it gives us an understanding of what we're dealing with. And in the case of this, it's going to be just a simple parsing error. It's probably like uh, not checking a null or some shit. Actually, this bug might be a little bit harder to figure out. Um, it's likely some... I don't know. It it really looks like it's corruption leading into, uh, like a jump into. Like stale data. I don't know why in our case, hmm. Um, I think it's an uninitialized memory use. I think. I don't, when I malloc memory and I call allocate, I mark it as initialized and that leaves the old contents of the memory. Ah, uh, allocate will set permissions, which will then tie it to dirty, which will reset it. So it should be zero. Okay, so it's not, it's not an uninitialized memory access for this pointer, the function pointer, because we crash at multiple locations and we shouldn't. I'm pretty sure we should be zeroing out the heap state. And we don't reuse addresses in our heap, which means that it has to be a, uh, an address that is dynamically corrupted and used, which is inbounds. 
So hopefully everything's built here and it looks like we're good. Um, yeah, it looks like we got it. So now we can do average dump dash G fuzz with this crashes and let's look at the 406 GDB args run this. Um, I guess maybe we do have to pass dwarf. So there we see it jumping right to kind of uh, not the right place to be executing. Um, but now, since we don't have any optimizations, we can see where we crashed. And it looks like, I have no idea yet. Let's take a look at the code. Um, bin utils fuzzing, bin utils GDB, x86, no opt, asan, rg this, uh, c tags are dot. Okay. So we are in linker.c at 1668. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. So we have a jump to this uh, callback. And I bet, I bet you can, yeah, you probably can just have this callback be fucked. So the question is, what caused this? And let's see if this is a, uh, it does look like it repros at the same address every time. So when I when I have something like this, um, you'll find that I like to look for the bytes in the input file. And let's see if this works. Just want to make sure the syntax is working. It does work. For a DC. Um, All right, let's see if things look corrupt. X10, I, well, PC is fucked. B tree, BT. So we can go into frame one. Now we're in the context of this frame and we can go and check out the value of info. Let's see, DRF info. And DRF info callbacks. And we'll DRF that too. Yeah, look at this. Multiple common is DC48. So some of them are pointers to actual things, but this one's just fucked. And I'm guessing that's uninitialized stuff on the heap. It definitely looks on an it. On the stack. Um. Get relocated section contents? What's this? Multiple common. I see. Uh, I see. Is that where we are? This is BFD simple. Get relocated section contents. Oh yeah, that is on an it stack. Well, 
Well, that's a doozy. Yeah, it's the only extra to the dummy. Yeah, and that's where we are. So we're in there. And it sets these things up. And these callbacks are just... Wow. So we're crashing info callbacks. And that is a ref to callbacks. And callbacks is on the stack. And... Yeah. Yikes. Well, that's kind of very likely exploitable. That's a pretty good bug. Hmm. So, all right, let's try this. Fuck. Hopefully that took effect. I think it did. This should now jump to zero. It does. Okay. So I don't know the correct way to do this, but we're going to say if info callbacks multiple common. I could exit. I think this is a, a good enough patch for me. There's a lot of calls to multiple common. Where is it supposed to get set? We're all in the same function here. Pretty sure. Who sets it? Oh, it's sent in globals usually. So the problem is this, that this creates a new dynamic structure and typically it uses a global. An LD main. So there's multiple common. And do I want it to go to the simple or whatever the fuck it is? Where they set up the fake things here? What does this do? Nothing. Okay. So, thoughts? Um, multiple common, simple, multiple common, get status, get diff. Let's go to 
callbacks equals put it back to uninit. And then that's it. That's our patch. We add the simple multiple common. It returns void, so I think it's fine. And then uh, what is the type of this? Tag BFD link callbacks. Yeah, there are a couple things in here that I could see potentially getting hit. But we'll fix the one that we have right now. Multiple. Uh, make. Seventy. Attribute unused. Attribute unused. Attribute unused. Attribute unused. Okay. So now we have a patched safe version. That would explain why we had arb exec. It, it looks like if you could find a way where you could cause a function to get called that copies some arbitrary part of the input file onto the stack, like it allocates a 64-byte name buffer, and you can recurse or do whatever to set up the stack in that spot, pretty sure you can just have it jump arbitrarily to what you want it to. Um, I would say in the ex exploitability index, pretty fucking high chance. Uh, given the complexity of the surface and the amount of things that are interacting with the input file and storing things on the stack, I'd say the odds are pretty fucking high that you could get control of this. Um, and that explains exactly what we were seeing in ours. We were seeing arbitrary exec in ours, but it wouldn't repro exactly the same way in this, which makes sense because our stack is going to be completely different because it's a different architecture. So... Now, we should be able to run this, and it shouldn't crash. Um, look at that. It doesn't crash, and it even continues. Well, I did something to my terminal, but that's, uh, that's fine. Okay, um... But yeah, it doesn't crash anymore. That's kind of fun. Heard you like Greek. Yeah, but it doesn't crash anymore. Okay. Binutils GDB get status. Get pull. Uh, get. Um, get, how do I, how do I get remote origin get remote update origin to bin utils gdb x86 no opt asan how, how do i do this i i want to i want to update it because it's to some like old folder that doesn't exist get remote because i did a clone from a folder How do I list it? Get URL? 
Okay, git remote update origin to home pleb bin utils fuzzing bin utils gdb x86 no off day sand. Okay, git remote remove origin. This is typically what I do. Git remote set origin that. Oh, git add origin this, git pull. Yeah. Git pull uh, origin master. Git status, git diff, git log. Oh, I gotta commit it. Git status, git commit, am fixed bug. Git status, git pull. Hey! Oh, wait. Hey! Okay, um... Export path is opt... Huh. Bin. Export path is this, colon path, make... So that's building the new one. And then we just have to update it. Get diff and get apply, yeah. Okay, um. Object dump July 20th, yep. That's new. So now we can copy that over. Git. Oh, GDB. Bin utils, GDB, bin utils, obj dump, dot, read elf, l, obj dump. I bet it didn't change anything in here. I bet all these addresses are the same. Ah, it changed. Um, two A one D eight. Two A one D eight. Twenty one B one D eight. Eight three three two and FD ninety eight. Okay, entry point is uh one zero nine eight four, and then we just have to see. We should really uh, write this, but I bet these are fine. One one five one D O colon. Oh shit! Okay, they changed just by the the same amount as the others. They're off by everything's off by like the twenty four bytes or whatever. Uh, calic R. So update calic, update free. Realic. Okay, so now we have our patched binary and that would be a lot easier if I actually wrote the fucking elf parser, but I'm oh, a, a smidge too lazy. I could get the addresses from the symbol table. I just haven't done it yet. Fuck. One one five one e four. Two oh a one d eight. Two a one d eight. Two a one d eight. To a B1D8, 8332, FD98, and then entry point 109A4.
Um. I did something wrong here. One in five any four. Huh. Ah, uh, I'm on the wrong binary. Upper stump risk V. There we go. That would make sense. Okay. Uh, remove all the crashes. And now... A uh, bunch of things are going to have to get reloaded to cache because it's a, a slightly different binary. So the addresses have changed and a lot of code we're generating. Um, and then we can go, let's flip it back to a dash G and we'll see how this goes. Do, do, do. But at this point, we probably should have no more crashes. We know of a couple null DRFs um, that happen due to allocations not being checked. I'm pretty sure we could find a lot of those. I'm pretty sure if we had a random chance of returning null from malloc, calloc, and realloc, I'm pretty sure we'd find a lot of bugs. Um, that's something I often add into my fuzzers. It's Those aren't really ever going to be exploitable bugs, but they're still kind of shitty behavior uh, on the code base. So they're kind of good to fix and, and try to figure out. Just kind of waiting for this to compile and then we'll see, uh, see how it behaves. Come on. But now our coverage and our feedback and all that stuff makes sense. And then now, here's the amazing part. If we see unique crashes go to one, we get excited. Because it's very likely a completely new bug that we haven't seen yet. And I'm kind of excited about that. Okay. Move crashes. Nice. Nothing there. Just rerunning this with uh, more of the caches complete. I want to see that VM percent rocket up to the 90% mark. Looks like it's on its way. So now the question is, will we find a new bug here? And I think the answer is likely going to be no. Um, I don't know. I need to check on one thing quick. Okay. Uh, it looks like coverage is going up kind of in the normal way. Everything's, yeah, everything looks normal here, except now we're not going to get that crash. Um, and I'm not aware, uh, well, we know of those null DRFs due to Malix, but we don't know of any other bugs in this code base, which honestly is fairly impressive. Um, obviously our fuzzer is ass. I'm sure there are plenty more bugs here that our fuzzer is not stressing, but... That's pretty impressive. Um, let's see, we've got 18,000 inputs. We're doing 6,000 fuzz cases a second. We're, we're easily, uh, we easily have time to explore our inputs and kind of see how everything's going there. Uh, what's our timeout currently set to? 
Timeout's uh, 1.5 bill, which is probably longer than it needs to be, but we seem to be getting good results here. Like, these graphs look really good. And now we get to kind of watch this cross over the 8,000 boundary. And last time I crossed over 8,000, we had kind of the infinite amount of bugs. So it'll be interesting to see if any of those bugs were different bugs and they just got lost in the noise of the thousands of unique crashes that we thought we had. Um, so we got to kind of whittle that down, figure that out. Come on. Okay. 8,100. We actually jumped... We jumped pretty hard into the 8,000, which is awesome to see. But... No crashes. It was a sad day. I don't know. I feel like this is something that... I'd say there's like a 10% chance that this would find a bug overnight. Like, even if I ran it for 8 hours, I'm pretty sure it still wouldn't find a bug. It's just... Our mutators are pretty terrible. Our corpus doesn't seem to be that crazy impactful. Although we are hitting some new stuff here. 8230. We're hitting a lot of new stuff. And this is probably pretty hard to reach stuff. Yeah, we've got better growth than we had in previous runs. And I forget what we're doing for corruption. Uh, okay, we're doing the shit ton of corruption, but what what is this on average? Uh, this is on average uh, 1024 bytes, but it pretty easily can be like a small amount. I don't know. I'm gonna add a couple more numbers here. We're gonna add. We're gonna match rng.rand mod three. And we're going to say if it's zero, then we do this. So we do like this exponential corruption if it's zero. Um, if it's a one, then we'll do this uniform corruption. And then if it's a two, we'll do a uniform but very mild corruption, like 32 bytes. And it's still random up to 32 bytes. Honestly, I kind of even want to go lower than that. I kind of want to do like a 16. So now we have a chance of a very small amount of coverage, uh, corruption. And then that's unreachable. I can't wait for Rust to be able to learn that and know that that's not a, um, know that that branch is, is not possible. It's not possible to hit this condition, but whatever. We got to also try tuning that timeout a bit. I think 1.5 is a little bit much. Let's go to 750. Let's have it. It's more than the 500 mil. It should be a, a perfect amount. I think uh, the difference between a bill and two bill was basically uh, non... It was basically nothing. So I think this one... And corrupt up to 16 in that case... So this should be a little bit more precise. It might get hurt a little bit because it's not going to... Because um, these are going to get diluted a little bit by trying to find the small corruption cases. But I think the small corruption cases will ultimately make this a better fuzzer. And it looks like it's doing quite well on both graphs so far. I think this will start performing pretty nicely. There's a big jump. And it's just continuing. Yeah, we're just blasting through code right now. We've gotten 300 in the past uh, 10 seconds, which is pretty impressive at this stage of the fuzzer. And that's going to show up. Yeah, it's a pretty strong cross, but uh, arguably that's where we were crossing before. Um. Okay. It looks like it's kind of falling off. 
which is interesting. I don't know if that's due to the timeout or the new uh, corruption mode. I don't know. I would expect this. Ooh, I like that. I like that turn. I like how that ticked up there. And now we're at 77. Yeah, it didn't hold it though. Hmm. Usually fuzz uh, known bugs. See how well your fuzzer finds it. Typically, no. Um. It's it's just really hard to do that in a meaningful way. It's really hard to not be biased. Uh, with past results when you do stuff like that. I mean, I'll fuzz against known bugs that I found with my own fuzzer to make sure that I didn't make my fuzzer find them slower, uh, which is kind of like a downgrade in the performance of the fuzzer. Wow, 7% reset time? 7% reset is pretty fucking high. I mean, it's not like a 10% speed up really gets us too much here. They're at 79 now. Still using a gig of memory? Yeah. Yeah, we all still have it set for a gig. I think it's just got some bad inputs in the corpus right now. And once those get diluted out, it'll probably get a little bit better. I don't know, it's 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 really hard to say if I heard it due to the timeout. Let's try, uh, we haven't really tried a ridiculous timeout. Let's try like five bill. That's, this is like a second of x86 CPU execution, which is uh, a lot. TLDR, it's a lot. Like, if you didn't have it writing to center it out, I feel like it would be unlikely that you'd have many files that would take more than a second to process. Although it's possible. So it's hurting our performance quite a bit. But yeah, we're gonna look better on coverage per case. No surprise there. Honestly, I was expecting us to look a lot better on there. I guess we're just like not hitting timeouts. I think the timeouts are really only there to prevent us from doing something really wrong. But I bet all I need to do is I just need to have a timeout. It looks like this is crossing at the same level as the others. So let's try a couple different mutation numbers. Let's try going for a higher number here. Let's go for like uh, 32768, which is massive. And then we'll drop this down to the, like, 128 that we used earlier. This is, like, massive amounts of corruption. I expect this to have a dramatic impact uh, for the worse or the better. I don't really care which one. I just want to learn what my limits are for corruption. And, yeah, it looks like it's hurting us. Oh, wait, wait. Wait. That help us? Seriously? With that much corruption? Yeah, it looks like it's going to have some diminishing returns. It probably helped us out early, and then it started really hurting us. Although, yeah, we're falling behind on both. Okay, that's a downgrade. Not too surprised. And then we'll go to 512 for these. And then we'll put this to 32. This is like a decent mix. And the other thing that we could do is we could look at uh, doing mutation kind of local to things in the file. But... Yeah, we could probably make the corpus a little bit better, but honestly, it looks like we have pretty good coverage. I think... Uh, I think in the next stream, we're probably going to have to write a, a, a real fuzzer. Because um, just flipping bytes like this is, is kind of pointless. Wow, even this looks like it's underperforming what we were using before. Uh, this is probably just... Yeah, the timeout's probably just too long. 
Let's go to uh, 500 mil. And this is what I do. I just like flip these around, see uh, see if I get improvements or not when I'm fuzzing. And I'm just looking for like those big, 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 big speed ups in and finding the same amount of coverage. So this hurt us a lot, it seems. Just throwing random bits at the input. Yep, that's all we're doing. Okay, uh, 61, 63, 64, 65. Okay. That kind of took a turn. That was a pretty big Nessie there. 67. What did we do? We dropped corruption a bit. Yeah, I think this will just perform better late game. There's 69. Wow. Wow. 71. It's not as good as what we were doing before, but I think that's mainly due to, due to the timeout. I think the corruption's still better. 1.5 bill seemed to be a good uh, timeout. Okay, this, I think this is the best one we've done so far. This is gonna be my guess. My guess is that this will be the best one so far. Okay, it's ahead on this, which is great. And then we should hopefully blast through the 6,000s. And if she get to 7,000 pretty damn fast here, it's at like 6,500 that we get a pretty big bump. And we're just kind of waiting for that to hit. But we have really good growth of coverage right now. And here we go. This is the hit that will take us to 7. Yep. And here we go. And there's 7. Honestly? Not that amazing. I, I might want to run this until 8 just to see if it starts ramping. But it seems like the massive amounts of corruption was better. What's your criteria for better? More coverage? Uh, same coverage in less time. That's all I care about. I don't care about more coverage. I mean, obviously, I want more more coverage. That's kind of the holy grail. Uh, but typically, it's not reasonable to expect more coverage. Uh, it's, it's easy to get the same coverage faster, but it's very difficult to get more coverage. So I'm mainly looking for density of my fuzzer. I'm looking for my fuzzer to... Uh, exercise the same amount of stuff it did before without discarding as many inputs as, as worthless. Because typically when you're fuzzing, you're throwing away almost all your inputs. Like in this situation, we've got, what, 500,000 cases and 20,000 inputs? So we're throwing away, like, for every couple... Uh, we're throwing away, like, basically all of our fuzz cases, right? We discard them all. We learn nothing from them. Um, and due to that, we're not really making any progress here. So, honestly, I feel like that 4K corruption was better. This, where we did mod 2, and then the 4K corruption. Let's try 2048, because we haven't tried that yet. Maybe a little bit of a middle ground there. Okay, we're just seeing what this does. That's bumping up there. 61. But mainly I'm trying to, like, when I'm doing this, it's kind of makes no sense because it's, it's mainly feel. But what I'm doing before I'm actually writing a fuzzer, when I'm just playing around with this, I'm trying to learn, like, properties of this code base. I'm trying to learn how sensitive it is to corruption. I'm trying to learn if it favors heavy versus minor corruption. I'm trying to learn uh, what sorts of coverage numbers are expected, the rates of which I'm expecting the coverage uh, to grow. And through this, I'm kind of getting an intuition for how I want to design a fuzzer for this, right? If this responds really well to major corruption, like it seems to be doing in this case, um, 
then I want to do massive corruption. Like, I want to design a fuzzer that's built around some pretty major uh, modifications to the input, or maybe make a generator for elf files that are, are wildly invalid. Um, but yeah, it's looking pretty good here. I think we're about to get 8,000, kind of faster than we ever have before, which is pretty damn good. I don't think we'll find a new crash with this, to be honest. Deep learning for parameter optimization. That's kind of just the standard, in my opinion. That's, that's basically, uh kind of how you get the next extra steps out of your fuzzing for without writing a, a custom generator. Um, generator and a mutator plus uh, like biasing and, and uh, feedback on the weights itself. So rather than feeding back inputs, uh, the goal should be to feedback uh, different weights and different parameters for what you use when your generator and mutator run. That way you're not actually building upon something that you concretely made before. You're actually just trying to reproduce the same good inputs. Um, and that's how you're going to get much better results. So I'm I'm hoping that we can, like, it's pretty common when fuzz, and it's hard to say with this target. I'm not familiar with this target. But it's pretty common that targets like this, we're banging our heads on 8,000, right? We will remember 8,000 basically forever. It's ingrained in our heads that 8,000 is kind of, like where this stuff really starts to get a lot harder to get new coverage up until 8,000. Yeah, it takes us two minutes to get 8,000. But after 8,000, we've never seen 9,000 before. But very likely what will happen is uh, as we improve this fuzzer and we write a real mutator that isn't just flip random bytes like this piece of shit, um, we'll probably see, uh, we'll probably set a new standard of like 10,000 where basically we expect 10,000 in in a couple seconds, right? So like right now we're looking at this and if we see, if we see like 8,000 by a million uh, fuzz cases, we're pretty impressed with that right now. And probably in like a week from now, we'll be like, holy shit, we didn't get 10,000 within 100,000 fuzz cases. It took us more than a minute to get to 10,000. Wow, what we changed just made it worse. And that's very much so what will end up, uh, um, that's very much so what we'll end up seeing. It's like, right now, this ceiling that we're hitting right now, this 8,000 ceiling, is just due to our fuzzer being a piece of shit. Uh, when we make our fuzzer better and start improving it, we'll likely get a new ceiling at a new level, and we'll get to that ceiling much faster than this one gets to its ceiling. Um, kind of just how it goes. Anyways, I think I'm going to wrap up the stream there. I am pretty fucking tired. Um, I am going to leave this run overnight, uh, as is. Um, in fact, um, yeah, I'm just going to let this run overnight, and I don't know, I'd say there's probably a 10% chance this finds a bug. I think it's, it's not really exercising that much new code, it's not really stressing state machines at all with this setup, um, but we'll see if just some raw numbers can get us anywhere with this, um, with this target. So yeah, see y'all around. And then the next few streams will hopefully be a little bit more focused around actually making a good fuzzer rather than getting a feel for what fuzzing feels like. So anyways, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully we find a crash in this, but I'm, I highly suspect we won't. So see y'all around.